Chapter 7 Israel Israel was still smiling as he entered the resort the next morning. He'd left Tiffany's house with a smile, and it had stayed on all night as he replayed the evening in his head. Not only was she beautiful and interesting, but they had the same relationship goal for the future, something that was hard to find in today's world. While Israel hadn't dated much since his last relationship, he'd listened to enough of his buddies talk about how their wives either didn't want children or only wanted one or two. Not that there was anything wrong with that, but Israel had come from a large family. He believed in large families, and he wanted a large family. So finding a woman who also had that desire was like finding a $100 bill on the sidewalk, rare and mind-blowing. Now he just had to figure out where to take her Friday. He hadn't been lying when he'd said he still didn't know the whole town, but he had driven through the area, so he had a basic idea of what was where. He just didn't know her well enough to know what she might like. He pulled open the front door and walked into the resort. While he could have entered the door closest to his office, Chance had told him the resort also had a coffee bar, and this morning he was in the mood to try it out. The check-in hostess greeted him as he entered the resort, and he returned the smile. There were parts of military life he missed, but he enjoyed how friendly everyone around here was. The coffee bar was bigger than Israel had expected. He'd thought it would be a little counter, like the kind found in grocery stores but it was more like a small dining room. The bar spanned one wall and was a deep mahogany color. Several tables dotted the room, and there was a large fireplace on the opposite wall, though it wasn't burning currently due to it being summer. Can I help you? Israel turned his attention to the woman behind the bar who had addressed him. She had dark hair pulled into a ponytail and warm brown eyes. She was beautiful but her shirt showed more cleavage than he was comfortable with. And after realizing his gaze had strayed down, he returned it to her face and was determined to keep it there. Uh, yes, I was looking to get a coffee, but I had no idea there was such a large setup here. Yep, we pretty much have it all. She grinned at him as if she knew his eyes had been wandering, which she probably did, he doubted she wore the shirt merely because it was comfortable. She had the look of a woman who enjoyed attention. Do you work here or are you a guest? Employee, Israel said, stepping closer to shake her hand. Israel Martinez. Sophia Garcia. Her lips pulled into a flirtatious smile, and she placed her hands on her hips, drawing his attention briefly to them. Welcome to the family. Now, I don't know if Chance told you, but employees get a 10% discount. See anything you like? Her hip jutted a little farther out, and a feeling of unease erupted in Israel's chest. He didn't know Sophia, but she had all the markings of a tag chaser. A woman who pursued any man in uniform. Israel had met a few throughout his years in the service, though he had never enjoyed the attention himself. He'd seen too many of his friends fall for these women, only to find out later the women cheated on them while they were deployed, or decided they didn't like the reality of military life, and sent them divorce notices in the mail. He was no longer in the military, nor was he in any sort of uniform, but the vibe coming from her was the same, and he had the feeling her flirtation was second nature to her. I'll just have a latte, thanks. What size, hun? She hadn't had much of an accent when she'd first greeted him, but it oozed from her lips now. The image of a chameleon flashed into his mind, and he wondered how many other sides she had. The medium, I guess. She leaned closer, bringing her ample bosom directly into his line of sight and flashed another flirtatious smile. We call that a grande, dear. Okay, then, a grande it is. He just wanted to pay the woman so he could take a step back from her. 
The flirtation rolling off her was churning his stomach. It struck him as funny that he'd found her attractive until she'd spoken, and then her demeanor had diminished any initial attraction that had existed. With Tiffany, it had been just the opposite. He'd found her attractive, and that attraction had only grown the more he'd spent time with her. Sounds good, and I'll tell you what, this first drink is on me. She flashed him a wink. Oh, that's fine. I brought money. He didn't want a free drink from this woman. He had a feeling she would take it as some sort of sign he was interested, and he most definitely was not. Really, how much? But she merely shook her head and turned to make the drink. Maybe he was making a bigger deal out of this than it was. He tried to tell himself that he'd misread her friendliness as something more. After all, being friendly was probably just a part of her job, like a barber who had to listen to stories all day. Here you go, hun. She called a moment later, and Israel took the drink and thanked her. She flashed another wink as she flicked a towel over her shoulder. Come back anytime. He wasn't sure he would be coming back anytime soon but he nodded at her before he turned toward the door. As he exited the coffee bar, his cell phone buzzed. Thankful for the distraction from Sophia, he hurried to his office. Hey, boss. Dustin looked up as he entered the office. Room 303 called with a clog, so I sent Josh up there, and Tiffany just called in. Evidently some kid reclogged the sink you just fixed, so I thought you might want to handle that one yourself. He flashed a mischievous grin, causing Israel to wonder just what was being said about Tiffany and himself behind his back. He'd have to ask Dustin or Chance about it later, but right now he needed to go fix Tiffany's sink. Again. He took a sip of his latte before setting it on his desk and grabbing his toolbox. The coffee wasn't bad, but it would have to wait, which was okay with him. Seeing Tiffany definitely held more appeal than the caffeinated beverage. Back in a bit, he said to Dustin, who flashed another impish grin at him as he stepped out of the office. Tiffany met him at the door, an apologetic expression on her face. I'm so sorry, Israel. I turned my back for a moment on this kid, and the next thing I know, the sink is overflowing. She shook her head. I have no idea what he shoved down there. Israel placed a hand on her arm and offered a sincere smile. Don't worry about it. He's just keeping me in business. With a good-natured chuff, Tiffany rolled her eyes but led the way to the sink. As Israel set his toolbox down and prepared to get started, a small boy sat down next to him. What you doing? Fixing the sink, Israel said with a smile. What are you doing? The boy looked at him, as if he'd lost his mind. Watching you, duh. Timmy, that's not how we address adults, Tiffany said, a pink flush of embarrassment gracing her cheeks, though she had no reason to be embarrassed. Israel lifted a hand to let her know he had this under control. Miss Tiffany is right, but I'm guessing that you didn't mean to be disrespectful, Timmy. Do you like fixing things? Timmy shrugged. I guess, but no one really lets me. They always tell me I'm too little. Israel felt for the boy. He'd been small when he was little too. Heck, he wasn't that large now. At only five foot ten, he was on the shorter side for men. And while the military had kept him in shape, he had never been the most muscular either. Would you like to help me? Timmy's eyes lit up. Really? You would let me? Sure. I remember being your age and not feeling very useful. He leaned closer to the boy, as if sharing a secret. It does get better as you get older, and sometimes watching will help you learn things. As Timmy nodded and smiled at him, Israel knew he had made a friend. He showed Timmy what all the tools were, giving their names and uses before allowing Timmy to use them. When Tiffany came back around, the amazement shone on her face, and Israel tried not to let his pride get the better of him. Still, he couldn't help but think he'd scored some serious points with Tiffany.